Daniel is uh, with me and we are going to... Uh, I will keep your ass on the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see what it does if I'm going to auto home. And it didn't look that difficult. There were some parts that you printed, and obviously, I mean, it's not a beginner mod, but at the same time, it it looks like something like this could be done by a number of people. I think this is it. What can go wrong? It seems to be working. I have no idea what I'm doing. What the fuck? I've never been so close to getting up. When my filament sponsor asked me how much filament I needed to start this project with, and I said 12 kilos, I didn't take into account that I would receive 16 spools of filament. I've got to print large things, and uh, swapping out filament during a print, that's not an option. So now I've got to re-spool everything and join the filament. I thought that joining ABS would be easy. Just make a simple rig with the stock mainboard and heater I had left, turn the heater upside down, insert the modified screw in there and use the gap of that screw to melt the filaments together. But it turned out that it wasn't that easy and I got a little frustrated. I have cut a whole hot end in two. I soldered both aluminium parts together and um, now I've got half a hot end here. And this works. So now I'm going to show you quickly how I <laughs> melt both filaments together. The setup is pretty simple. This is the main board. This is power supply set at 12 volt. I've set this extruder temperature to 260 degrees, which is the maximum. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple, but it takes some practice. First, I'm going to cut it at a pretty steep angle. And I've got this Capricorn Bowden tube. I saw some people do it with an open flame. I tried that, but ABS is pretty good at burning. This tube is a little transparent, so I can see where it's connected. I'm going to put this where they meet, here at the heater. And once it melts, you can feel that you can press both parts together. Yeah, I can feel it melting. Yeah, just keep it a bit longer so you know it's melting good. Okay, and now I'm going to press both parts together. And I have to be quick with a piece of cloth to squeeze it a bit, so this decreases the diameter. Well, let's see how it went. And now both parts are fused together. But I can hear you thinking, filament sponsor? For 3D printing those rims I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need a lot of material, so I need a filament sponsor. And I'm going to need strong material, so not just any filament sponsor. So I've teamed up with 3D4 Makers. 3D4 Makers is a filament manufacturer which is located in Haarlem, which is the original Haarlem. And they've got a very interesting range of filaments. Besides the regular PLA, PTG and ABS, they've got some next level stuff as well, like Peak, Pack and Ultim. Um, these kind of materials you cannot print them on your standard and a 3 printer but um, if you want to make something which is very temperature resistant or extremely strong you should take a look into those materials another interesting filament they have is Vaseline this can be printed on a standard machine and with the right settings the Vaseline C8 can be printed without seeing the layer lines so that's perfect for prototyping, it's easy to post process. And a filament which I think is very interesting is the Vaseline PCL100. This is used for biomedical research. Another thing worth mentioning 
is that their production process is different than what normally is done. They have made their own production process. Normally when the filament is extruded, it's being cooled by a large water bed. And 3D for makers is using air to cool the filament. So it's even drier. And this results in better quality, better layer adhesion and less printing issues. So check out the website 3d4makers.com. They are going to add some new materials quite soon, like nylon with carbon fiber and polycarbonate. So that's awesome. And yes, they ship worldwide. And now back to you, respooling John. It's beautiful weather outside. So this is a great moment to check if the rim actually fits on that car. I've printed this outline with my 2D printer. It's uh, the crosscut section of the rim, so I can check if everything fits, if nothing will collide. I've printed these sections with this, this valve stem in there to see if that fits. Um, <laughs> my first try, the hole was a bit too big, so I can just press it in and out. It shouldn't go this easy. I post updates regularly on Twitter, so you can follow me there to see more of these things. And I've printed this hub. It, it's printed quickly, so it doesn't look that good. I can use this to check if it fits. <laughs> it fits without any. Nice. I'm curious if it will work with this brake clamp. That's going to be a problem. Back to the drawing board. Oh, fuck. Pretty stupid that I didn't take that brake caliper into account. I've done some quick measurements to determine the size of that brake caliper. And it turns out that if I'm going to remove that from the rim, then there isn't much of that rim left. So I had to come up with a different solution. I could redesign the whole rim, but um, I went with a negative ET value. Basically a negative ET value means that the rim itself is going to be more to the outside. And I know that will change the structural integrity of that rim. But for now, this is the easiest method. And on the positive side, it will look even cooler. So I've basically added a color here, an extrusion of 20 millimeters. The print has failed. It snapped at the first joint and it, it was due to the diameter. It is too large. It kept stuck in this hot end. And the problem is I have to re-spool the whole thing and decrease the diameters of all these joints. I have done some stupid things on this channel. I kind of like the vibe we had going on. So my suggestion would be to pretend that this didn't happen.
Yes, it's printing in midair. <laughs> it's still an incredible print, but oh, it sucks that it again, again it got stuck on one of these joints and I sanded them down to the proper diameter. On the positive side, the printer is running reliable and stable. I can print large things out of ABS. That's awesome. I'm very happy that it managed to print the outer rim and the, um, the, the hub. So I can see if this fits on the car. I don't have enough material left to print another rim. So what I'm going to, to do is to discuss this with 3D4 makers. They're going to take a look if they can deliver some bigger spools and I'm going to find a way in which I can join the filaments in a reliable, accurate and easy way. So if you have a suggestion of how to join ABS in a reliable way, then uh, please let me know in the comments. I must say this is still an impressive print and these layer lines, they look awesome. It's just like a height map. I'm going to see if this thing will fit the car, but before I'm going to do that, I want to thank all my Patreons, especially these Patreons. Without your help, I couldn't have done this. And I want to thank everyone who has donated on my website and to my sponsors who made this possible. So, let's go to the car. Here you go. <laughs> nice. Fuck yeah! The diameter of the hub must be a bit bigger. But other than that, it fits. Okay. Okay, I will find a reliable way to join the filaments. And then I can start printing the rim. Hopefully a full rim. And I can do some tests, see if, it will, if I can get a tire around it. See if I can pressurize it, put it on its wheels and see if this will hold or not and if it does then we will see if we can drive and steer and do more tests if you made it all the way to here thanks a lot and thanks for watching and um, if you like this video then hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed already but if you are curious how this is going to turn out then uh, subscribe and then uh, i'll see you in the next video bye Holy shit, I see this really look out.